uh, some modifications and uh, some changes in the indications and uh, technique uh, of HDO. Uh, unfortunately, bad news. Uh, Orthopedic surgeons perform less and less uh, high tibial osteotomies for its classical indication uh, for medial compartment osteoarthritis in middle-aged patients because of the pressure of uh, arthroscopic and uh, reconstructive surgeries. Uh, but also we have some good news. Uh, there are some new territories to be landed by high tibial osteotomy uh, by emerging of the new technologies in cartilage and uh, meniscus repair. These techniques are sometimes are quite expensive, but f both physically and uh, biologically, uh, and, and then these techniques uh, enlarged the, the zone of uh, high tibial osteotomy. Uh, for uh, the gar to guarantee the successful results of uh, this, uh, these uh, expensive techniques, uh, they need a proper biomechanics. Uh, and uh, high tibial osteotomy provided, and uh, to, uh, you can combine both techniques, uh, cartilage repair and uh, high tibial osteotomy at the same time. Another uh, territory to, to be landed by high tibial osteotomy, uh, there are some uh, ligament imbalances around the knee joint. You can change the tibial slope to treat chronic uh, ligament insufficiency, cruciate ligament insufficiencies, and you can uh, control the virus thrust uh, 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 coming from the posterolateral corner injuries and the lateral ligament injuries. You can uh, combine uh, uh, the high tibial osteotomy technique. Third, HDO is a concept uh, to deal all the problems around the knee joint combined HDO and other techniques. You can combine ligament reconstruction or changing the tibial slope with high tibial osteotomy. You can deal with uh, significant uh, uh, flexion contractures by deflection at the same time. And you can also deal with the patellofemoral, significant patellofemoral problems by the advancement of the tibial tuberosity. Uh, we should keep some parameters uh, they should uh, uh, target the patient, they should target the knee. Patient-oriented HDO, uh, they are the important parameters in choosing the um, HDO patient. Uh, first two parameters is, uh, are uh, particularly important in choosing the right patient, such as in that case, 39-year-old uh, railway servant, uh, He's active, working at least uh, nine, uh, eight hours a day, uh, but he has uh, two both knees, three compartmental uh, problems, huge medial cyst formation, not a good candidate for a high tibial osteotomy, but in that case you can choose a uh, high tibial osteotomy because he is still active and young patient. Uh, you should enlarge the HDO zone in this patient's group. And he is still active after 12 years of uh, first osteotomy and five years uh, after the, the right side. Now, uh, we have also some important parameters about the knee joint. We should uh, keep in mind all these parameters by choosing the right technique. Uh, you, you heard before, uh, at the moment, uh, there's a tendency to choose, in all cases uh, for HDO, open wedge technique. But I'm not sure uh, open wedge technique is ideal for all HDO patients. Uh, HDO open wedge technique uh, is ideal, best candidate, young or middle-aged patient with early arthritis, not advanced one, and limited and metaphysial virus, this, and uh, with a uh, stable implant. You see uh, a patient with metaphysial virus deformity, best uh, candidate for the high tibial osteotomy with open wedge technique, You can correct the deformity and attention, special attention to the tibial slope after this type of implant. Uh, 
the surgeon who choose the open wedge technique should consider uh, the, by, the, by using this technique, increasing the slope, flowering the patella, longer healing time, uh, and for larger deformities, it needs more time, and more loss in comparison to closed wedge technique in early period in correction related to the open cortex uh, breakage or delayed union. You can, uh, to, to overcome these problems, you can modify the technique and uh, you can use some special implants instruments, even navigation, but it's not, uh, they are not completely avoidable after open wedge high tibial osteotomy technique. In some cases, it is relatively contraindicated, as uh, previous speakers uh, stated out. And finally, uh, it's a problem. It has been demonstrated that uh, after uh, open wedge high tibial osteo osteotomy, the pressure in the medial compartment, affected compartment, does not automatically decrease. To decrease the um, pressure in the medial compartment, you should completely release the MCL. On the other hand, best case for the closed wedge technique is a medial, uh, middle aged pa active patient with at least moderate degree of the problem, not mild degree of osteoarthritis, and without metaphyseal virus deformity. Deformity should be caused by uh, articular uh, wheel virus, as in that case, Articular virus, narrowing of the space, just appearance just before the same operation on the right side. Uh, surgeon uh, who consider, uh, who choose the closed wedge technique, also consider difficulty in technique. It's more difficult for, uh, than the open wedge technique. It is not possible fine training during the operation. Uh, you get more hyper and under corrections. You, sh uh, you should deal with the fibula and uh, you should get some peroneal nerve problems and uh, related to the uh, changes in the proximal tibial geometry, you should get some problems during subsequent total knee arthroplasty. Uh, for patients larger with larger deformities, I mean uh, larger than 15 degrees in mechanical virus, uh, both techniques, open wedge and closed wedge techniques are even more problematic and uh, uh, such as in that case, the, these are, they are special cases, uh, previous osteosarcoma patient treated uh, multi multiple oper by trip, uh, multiple operations, uh, finally by vascular fibular graft uh, last, uh, seven years ago, last time, uh, she has a residual virus deformity, virus trust during walking with a 20, two degree uh, in mechanical axis uh, virus deformity. Uh, in, that, in those cases, you can use uh, gradual or acute correction by an external fixation technique and uh, dome type high tibial osteotomy. I think it is more uh, comfortable for the surgeon after the surgery. It is also possible uh, to um, uh, tailor the uh, uh, correction amount uh, by the technique uh, it's la uh, la narrowing of the knee joint defines the uh, mechanical axis passage at around the knee joint. Uh, you can move more, more lateral as the deformity uh, increased. Patients with significant patellofemoral pain, you can combine both techniques, high tibial osteotomy and uh, uh, anteriorization of the uh, tibial tuberosity. It's possible, and it's not uh, so difficult, problematic with uh, pr subsequent uh, uh, total knee arthroplasty. In conclusion, high tibial osteotomy is a versatile technique. It allows uh, modifications to treat unique and uh, combined problems. No one technique is uh, available for all HDO patients, and so orthopedic surgeon should uh, keep all the techniques in his armamentarium and uh, surgeon should choose the right technique for the right patient and for the right knee. Thank you. So we have time for three questions, please.